Hey everyone, my name is Matt, Cryptic if you prefer, and today we're going to dive right back into Hypershade. Initially when I set out to do this series, I wanted to do a video on three nodes at a time, but I'm realizing now that it might be a little bit better just to do a video per node, just to explain the different functions that each node kind of handles. So for today's video, we're going to be talking about Arnold's AI Composite node. This allows us to change our materials while using information from other textures in the same way that we would handle this information in post-production with compositing. So without trying to drag out this video, please make sure you like and subscribe because it is the best way to support this channel and what I do here. If you want to take that step a little bit further, you can join as a member on YouTube or you can join my Patreon. Well, you'll get access to free models and downloads every month, as well as exclusive content to that platform. Those links are listed down below, but let's go ahead and jump into this video. Okay, so if you're familiar with the last video, we went over the brick material. We created kind of a cool purple graffiti brick material. So today, we're gonna to be going over the same kind of material because I figured this would be the best way to kind of continue this on. We're gonna look at the AI composite node. The AI composite node is a nice, super powerful node that we can use to kind of really change the way our materials are looking by pulling information into them. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up Hypershade here. And here we have the material minus the purple color change, all that stuff. So I've removed everything that we did in the last tutorial aside from just the base material because this is where we're going to focus on this AI composite node. You've also see that I've added another material in here. This is just a standard cool pixelated rainbow texture that we're gonna to use to kind of show how this node works and what it can do. So with that said, let's go ahead and add that. So we're gonna type tab, type in AI composite, and that's gonna add our AI composite. This looks very similar to the layered shader or any of the other multi-node shaders that you're used to. The only difference is, is that we're gonna be taking two different images and positing it into one and blending that back into our network. So what I wanna do is I'm gonna look at my albedo map, which is my color map, I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect this. So we're gonna break that connection there. We're gonna move our composite node into here. Again, this node is going to be used to composite two images together. So what we're gonna do is our A node is going to be our out color of our albedo. So I want that to be the base. And then our out color is going to go straight into the input of the multiply divide, just like we had it set up before. Uh, when we go to look at this in our viewport, we'll see that it's red now. That's because if we look back at our setup, it's compositing the other color into that network, which is this red color. So we need to add something to that if we actually wanna get some sort of result out of that. So we're gonna take this file, which is the rainbow thing, and we're going to drag it to A, and we'll see how that starts to change this node. So right now the node is locked down, We've got our two different composite nodes in there, and now we can change some stuff. So we have a couple things we can change here. We can change operation and alpha operation. Operation is the one that we're gonna be primarily focusing on because this is how this is going to work. If I take this and move this down, we can see that it's compositing right now. So we have our brick material, as well as this cool rainbow, like colorful madness. So what we can do in here, we can change this mode. So when we take a look at our compositing, if I scroll in here and just take a look here, we have a ton of different options in here. So these are all the same compositing nodes you would be familiar with if you used anything like DaVinci Fusion or Nuke. All of those applications use the same kind of mathematical nodes to average images together. So these are the same operations. So right now we're blending with over, but we have any number of options in here. So when we click this drop down box, you see we have all of these different composite nodes. So in here we can change really how our materials are working together, depending on what operation we're actually using. Now I could go over this all day long about what each one of these nodes do, but the best way honestly is just to go into Arnold's documentation and take a look at what each one of these can actually do and what the math is behind them. The only other thing you need to know about this node is the alpha operation. All this is doing is going to tell Maya where we're pulling the alpha from. Are we using the same on both images? Are we pulling from image one? Or are we pulling from image two? And when you drop that down, you can see you have same A or B. A and B are our two respective images. It should be also noted that you can't use this node to combine multiple materials. So if you're trying to take two AI standard surface materials and merge them into one, you can't really do that. This is really meant for your actual image data, so your texture files, to then composite them together and then output them to an actual material. So this is something that when we look at it, we wouldn't want to use it here at the end because you can see when I combine this car paint with this brick, it doesn't work out. We just get kind of a broken material and there's just no, there's no 
render. That's kind of it. That is the AI composite node. It's a super awesome node that gives us the ability to actually composite multiple images together into one texture file and then output that to an actual material. But if you found this helpful, let me know. If you have other nodes inside of Maya that you're curious about and you want to know more about, let me know down in the comments. I'd love to make a video on them. I'm going to continue probably doing these videos based on a single node at a time, just because I think as far as explaining this subject goes, it's probably going to be a little bit easier to do that going forward. So if you made it to the end of the video, thank you so much for watching. Thank you for hanging out. And remember, if you want to join on Patreon, you get a supporter credit at the end of all of my videos on top of helping me do what I do here. So thank you again for watching and I will see you all in the next one.